Hey, beautiful people. <laughs> so I feel inspired to record this video as I've gotten some questions from just some of the people that follow me around free birth. But today I wanted to specifically focus on just some of the things that I purchased to have this free birth. I will say as a disclaimer, if that's the right word to use, um, that you don't need to have really anything at all. These are just a few things I wanted to have as my plan is to have my baby girl here in our apartment and just kind of as a way of, to prevent some mess. <laughs> and um, also I included in one thing in particular that I'm going to use um, in like the postpartum like after birth. So to dive right in, um, I'll be having a free birth right here in my apartment with just my husband and my daughter. And um, yeah, I'm gonna deliver this baby all on my own, just with the support of my husband um, and the support of all of the resources and research that I have poured my heart and soul into for the last almost 20 weeks of my life. Um, so one of the things that I did go ahead and get were just some Chucks pads. <laughs> they came in a hundred pack. So I'm also going to be using these after birth to like lay on my bed to free bleed instead of having to worry about putting on the diaper and all the pads and all the ice packs. And I really just want to keep it super simple. It was so frustrating and kind of stressful to constantly be changing out the pads and so wasteful too. Obviously these are wasteful too, but I view it as a, a, a lot more gentle way of just like setting some pads down on my bed, on the couch, wherever I will be sitting or lying while breastfeeding um, as a way to just soak up any of the blood and fluids that will be coming out after birth as well as during birth. So I'm gonna have them set up in a, several locations throughout the apartment just because I don't know, you know, where I'm going to actually end up delivering this baby, whether it be on the bed, in the bathroom, maybe I'll do it in the tub. I wouldn't need the checks pads there, but I'm just gonna have them set up in several locations throughout the bed, throughout the apartment to, yeah, just prevent mess as much as possible. Obviously, mess is a mess. You could just clean it up. It's not that big of a deal, but I definitely want to set them down over the rug if that's where it ends up happening um, or like over the bed to just hopefully prevent destroying our bed. <laughs> but it is really old bed anyway, so who cares? Um, so I got that. And then these are some candles. Um, I looked so hard for 100% soy wax non-toxic candles and I wasn't able to find them as I'm vegan so I really just try to purchase everything that's vegan. This is like the first non-vegan thing that I've purchased. They're 100% beeswax candles. Um, I just wanted to make sure that they were just completely non-toxin so none of the para paraffin um, materials or ingredients. Um, cause this is these candles I'm going to, going to be using, or my husband's going to be using, we'll probably, depending on my position, we'll probably both do it, or it'll just be my husband using these candles to burn the cord. We're going to do a little burning ceremony after the umbilical cord is fully done pulsating any blood and just fully limp and the placenta is out. Um, so however long that takes, however long after the birth, we're going to burn the cord. Um, burning the cord, some one of the main pluses to this, I feel like it's a more gentle method rather than cutting. Um, although I don't have anything against cutting the cord as well. Um, but I like the fact that it cauterizes it and you don't have to worry about using the clamp. So um, I'm going, we're going to be burning the cord and then just tying it off in a knot, waiting for it to dry up completely and fall off naturally. Um, so yeah, that's what these candles are for. And then everything else, um, this bowl, <laughs> we might end up using a different bowl. This is what we're going to burn the cord over just so any of the wax drippings can drip directly into the bowl, prevent some mess, um, and 
we'll probably just use like this cloth, um, maybe a piece of foil. We're gonna do it far enough away from her so she won't feel any of the heat. Um, and definitely one of the things that we will also be doing is um, just kind of like pinching the cord to make sure that she doesn't react. Um, which she shouldn't because once the blood fully stops pulsating, she shouldn't feel um, anything that we do to the cord. Um, but yeah, just as a precaution, we'll cover, we'll have her covered with this, um, just this little blanket. And then he will hold both of the candles, burn the cord over this bowl. And I've heard it takes anywhere from like 10 to 15 minutes. Um, just depending and yeah I heard that as you pretty much don't have there isn't any smell except for the smoke from the candle so we're gonna make sure the fire alarm is unattached because we have a very sensitive fire alarm um, so yeah that's super simple just a bowl of candles chucks pads a little muslin cloth um, to keep her warm as well as just shield from any of the heat she might feel from the candle. And then literally I just set these here just to remember to go over them. Just some old towels um, I'm sure we'll end up using to like clean stuff up. And then these other two things aren't directly like related to free birthing. They're just some things that I want to try throughout labor that worked a look that I noticed working a bit in my last labor combs, um, pressing them in to your um, acupressure points on your hands. Um, that has helped a lot of people during contractions. Obviously, mostly I'm going to be dependent on my breath and the ability to move in whichever way feels best through these contractions but breath is mostly what I'm going to be working with as well as the birthing ball. I'm definitely looking forward to utilizing the birth ball this time around as I didn't get the opportunity to do that last time with a hospital birth. And then for after birth contractions, I kind of just wanted to slide this in. This doesn't really have anything to do with free birth, um, but I picked up these after birth contraction um, contractions tincture is an herbal supplement that a lot of women swear by when it comes to having afterbirth contractions which you don't typically experience in your first pregnancy or your first labor and postpartum which I did not um, but I'm expecting to experience them with this um, postpartum experience so I have these just in case you put like five to six drops or so into or eight pumps I guess this one into your water and so I will definitely be utilizing this and hopefully it will help with any afterbirth contractions that I start to feel shortly after the labor and delivery so yeah just those few things um I really can't I was trying to scratch my head to think of anything else I would be using. I obviously didn't show you my birthing ball, but I talked about it. I'll definitely be utilizing that probably in earlier labor, maybe all throughout labor if it's feeling really good. The tub, um, I'll definitely probably be utilizing that. I don't have like a big deep tub or anything, so I'm not expecting to actually deliver in the tub unless it just happens that way. Um, but. I've heard getting into the shower and just running hot water on your back can be really helpful. Again, I didn't have the opportunity to really utilize any of these tools in my last labor and delivery because we rushed to the hospital, ended up getting an epidural and being hooked up to a monitor and I was literally just glued to a bed. Um, yeah, dealing with the contractions. <laughs> so. I'm really looking forward to a much more calm, natural, physiological experience um, that I have full control over. So those are just the few things that I wanted to kind of go over. You really, like I said, don't need anything at all. Women have been doing this since the beginning of time. And I think it's just so important to trust your body. Um, birth is one of the most natural things. 
um, in the world. And so it's just really important to trust your body. And yeah, I'm just hoping for a very safe and beautiful and calm birth and delivery. And of course, most importantly, a healthy baby and a healthy mama.